So here are seven reasons you need to know the name and work of Xavier Dolan. Number seven, he already has four feature films under his belt and he's just 24 years old. Six, his first, Je Tu Ma Mère or I Killed My Mother, received an eight minute standing ovation from the tough crowd at Cannes. Five, that film, I Killed My Mother, caught the eye of a production company belonging to Brad Pitt. Not that we need Brad's endorsement, but you know what I'm talking about. Four, he's the voice of Jacob in the French language dub of Twilight. J'en ai rien à foutre de vos besoins. Three, he loves Titanic. All right, nobody's perfect. Number two, on Twitter, he's a bit of a street fighter, not afraid to give it back to critics. And finally, Xavier's new film is another good one. It's called Tom at the Farm. It's had its Canadian premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival. It's about a trip to the country that turns out to be far from ideal. It's one of my favorite guys to talk to. Please welcome back to the program, Xavier Nolan. Good to see you. Welcome back. How are things? Good. Yeah. Good. Enjoying Busy. This, this, yeah, no kidding, man. <laughs> yeah. Festivals, travel, planning, yeah. festivals. Does it ever be, can it be too much? Um, starting to be a little too much, yeah. which is why I'm going back to Montreal, back to prep for another one, another movie. Um, we've talked about how so much of what you've done revolves around the concept of impossible love. Yeah. This, this one revolves around the death of a man and his partner shows up and the mother doesn't know that the, the, her son was gay. It's hard to tell almost who's got the impossible love in this one because I think a lot of people have it, it in this one. Yeah, it's not really what we, what I wanted to go for. Like for me, it was really a rupture. I yeah. thought the first three are really about, you know, even the first one, I killed my mother. It was, you know, impossible love between mother and son. Uh, but this one for me is more movie on uh, intolerance and violence. What's just, your yeah. relationship with violence? Did you grow up around it? Um, yeah, you know, I was a violent, uh, I was a violent kid. I was sort of a bully, I, I but then, you know, other kids grew up. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for that. So. So were you working through some of that, the idea of bullying and that? Well, there's obviously an opportunity to express the violence within yourself. That's yeah. within your, it's, you know, it's, it's, there were some scenes that were liberating in terms of, uh, like, but I was actually getting beaten up. I'm not, I was, like, I'm not the one who's beating him right. up. Penance. Which is weird, I guess. Maybe it's penance yourself into for that, you. Huh? Yeah, redemption. You're also the star, too. That's the other thing, or one of the stars in this, right? Yeah. So cutting through yourself and making yourself go through that, easy? I what love do, it. What do you love about it? Imagining how it feels, imagine, you know, putting yourself into, uh, projecting yourself in that situation is fun for an actor, it's... Were you bullied when you were a kid as well? Like, after you did the bullying, were you... I was both. Yeah? Bullied and bully. Usually works that way, though, doesn't it? It works in, you know, you get out of... When I, um, when my mom sent me off to boarding school in, in high school, because I was in boarding school, I, I was in, sorry, I was in, uh, yeah. That's how you call it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, when I was in uh, elementary school, and then again in high school. Let's put that picture up. There he is. Circled out. <laughs> that, that, that's what you're talking about? <laughs> Look at that. Good job. Well played. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to go there. I just you know, had it as a standby. Although, ironically, you wanted to shoot a movie there, and they wouldn't let you shoot a movie there, right? Is that true? It is. Because of the, you know, homosexual stuff. That's why. Yeah, that's why. And there was a scene where I was beaten up for that reason in the movie. How interesting. Schools. Are you surprised that they took that position? No. It's a religious school, oh, yeah. and they, they would be. But I think any school would be sort of uh, reluctant to, you know, letting people in and, and then showing violence. And, uh, but that was the main reason why they said no, but we know that there was more. Do you still read all your reviews? Yeah. Here's the thing. Sure. I, I follow you on Twitter. You make me laugh. And then you posted this tweet the other day. Mm -hmm. Can I sh show this tweet for a second? Oh, my God. You have, like, all I have it there. Yeah, we planned this, dude. So um, <laughs> there was a review in The Hollywood Reporter, and your response was, uh, at them, the Hollywood Reporter movies, you can kiss my narcissistic ass. <laughs> Which was exceptional. Well, they talked about narcissism is what you got to say. I'm not an insane person no, saying No, no, no. You were referring to the review, right? Yeah, you know? because... 
I think that if you're a critic for The Hollywood Reporter and you can't fathom that an actor is going to be in, you know, in front of the camera, if, even if he is the director, if he's the lead, you know, it's called Tom at the Farm. Right. I'm Tom, right. you know, at the farm. <laughs> so once we're at the farm, I will be in front of the camera. <laughs> you know, that's one thing we know about right. the movie. So it's just, it's, it's, you know, narcissism. Or if I was not the director, we would not be talking about, you know, is Woody Allen narcissistic for having put himself in front of the camera for all right. those years? In fact, kissing the hottest girls and all, you know, it's... That he could totally get, right? Well, <laughs> what I mean is that I thought it was a personal attack. Well, no, it's not an attack. It's just, you know, I'm interested in reviews, not diagnosis on who I am, you know. As you get more experience, do you approach it differently? Do you receive that stuff differently? The reviews? Yeah. I always well, I'm in a welcoming way. I mean, the same curiosity, the same anxiety, I'd say. Sure. You know, you're making this for a mom and dad, a couple of friends you want to impress, maybe a crush or two. And then when you get out of that inner circle, you, you realize that you're doing this for a public. And then, you know, there's a secret part in you that wants to impress, sure. wants to impress journalists. More of the Xavier Dolan right after this. Everyone has their own secret garden, happy place, or at least I, I hope you do. Mine may or may not be in, uh, you know, in, in, in sort of infused with a lot of Montreal Canadiens memorabilia and perhaps the memories of the taste of cheese. We'll find out what that space is for Xavier next. Serenity now. Everybody who that was? It's my dad. It's your dad. Mm -hmm. It's a great shot of him, man. Yeah. Why do you do this to me? What? <laughs> my dad, my photo, but my 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 glass. It's, it's just such it's, a lesson of humility. It's, no, it's not. You don't need the humility. You're fine there. But it's it's this idea that your father. Yeah. Um, it's been a performer. Obviously, mm -hmm. he's worked with you. He's an actor. Yeah. Also. It's so great to see. He acts in the film. He's in your film. I love my father, and I've been I've cast him in every movie since the beginning, and he's always been, I love him, I think he's a good actor. It's not a thing like, like you know, giving daddy the, the gig. You know, he's also such a good sport for, you know, being in those movies, because we always shot in such conditions. And like the last movie, Tom at the Farm, he got on set at like eight. We started to shoot his scene at like two in the morning. We were super rushed, because we were like overtimed, and it was hell. I mean, it's, he was really good in it, but I mean, um, so I love working with my dad. Is it, is it also really nice just to have him on set and know that you can go, that your father's there? Because you're still, oh. I mean, you're young, man. That's the thing people might, I mean, you look young, but you're young. You made a lot of films and you're only approaching your mid-twenties. Yeah, but, um, I mean, I'm not insecure in a set. Like, yeah. daddy is no comfort. Like, I'm, I'm happy because he's my, he's my father and he's my friend. Yeah. So I'm just happy that he's there because we get a, you know, I'm like, I'm really happy on a set. It's like a set is what I'm waiting for in my life. When I'm not on a set, I'm waiting. Okay, so um, the Zen Buddhists would suggest that at some point that's not going to work for you. At some point you have to find your still quietness. Can you find it elsewhere? <laughs> well, you know, people are asking me, when are you gonna take a break? When are you taking any vacation? Why do you go on a nice little holiday? And I'm like, I don't need to be taking a vacation from a life like that. It's a lot of work, sure, and sometimes I'm tired, but, you know, it's a constant stream of, I mean, it's, you know, working with actors, uh, you know, shopping for costumes, rehearsals, shooting, uh, it's, it's all so inspiring, and it's, I'm so, I don't wanna say lucky, because I've worked hard for this, but, um, but yeah, still, ultimately, I'm lucky to be doing that job. You know, it's, it's not even a job, it's a form of art. It's, it's, it's so, um, it's the best job in the world. Anthropology, something you're too scared to try. Jumping from those planes, like in a, uh, 
Like Parachu par yeah, parachuting. Yeah, yeah. I would, I'm not. I'm not into that Too either. Scared. If you're I'll die. Yeah, of course, because sometimes that stuff doesn't. You die open. doing these things, and then you're you're dead. Right. <laughs> and then what's the point, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy thing. Um, what's one film that you would give an eight-minute standing ovation to? The piano. Feels good, doesn't it? That film. Yeah, it's great. It's just it's. Uh, Perfect movie. It, it does exactly what it's supposed to be doing, and it's it's just so romantic and poetic and, and good. And and anybody that hates that movie is abnormal. <laughs> so describe winning the International Films Critic Choice Award in Venice, but describe it using only your face. If you had a personal theme song, every time you walked into a room, what would it be? A personal theme song. So every time you walked in a room, one song could play and it's yours. What would it be? It's great to walk on glorious songs and uh, Map of the Problematic from Muse. It's always a pleasure, man. You're one of the best. Thank you. Appreciate it. Call me the Farmers in with film, film a la ferme. We'll be right back.